Welcome back to Exploring the New Testament. I want to talk to you today about Colossians and Philemon. These are two more of Paul's prison epistles, the letters that he wrote during his imprisonment in Rome around A.D. 62. And these two letters in particular go together because the letter of Colossians is written to the church at Colossae, which is in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. But Philemon was sent along with this letter to an individual in the congregation. So these two letters were written at the same time, sent at the same time. So the letter of Colossians, of course, is the longer of the two. It's four chapters long. And the main point is that we have hope because Christ is above all things and our life is secure with him. So like many of Paul's letters, the first half is a more doctrinal half. The second half is a more application half. So chapters one and two focuses on the fact that Christ is above all things. Chapters three through four is uh, focused on the application. Live the life that is secured in Christ above. It's also quite clear that he wrote this letter around the same time as the letter of Ephesians. It shares a lot of similar material, not exactly word for word, but a lot of the same types of things that are said in Ephesians are said again in Colossians in a slightly different way. So the main point is about Christ being above all things. He says in Colossians 1.15 that Christ is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn over all creation. This means that Christ is superior to every created thing, which makes sense because, of course, he created everything. Uh, Paul says in Colossians 1.17, He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. There is no higher power or authority than Jesus Christ himself. No spirit or magical skill or demonic power comes close to the sovereign power of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we must not seek any other power but Jesus. By his death, Christ paid for our sins, and he, and this is Colossians 2.15, disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. The only place to find power and authority and peace and safety in the world today is in Jesus Christ. And our life is only secure when we are united with him. He reminds us that Christ is in us, and it's Christ in us that gives us the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. Our relationship with Jesus Christ guarantees our life and our future glorification. And so we should not fear anything because Christ is seated at the right hand of God in heaven, and our life is hidden in Christ with God. So Paul commands us to set our minds on the things that are above, not on earthly things. And that means killing our sinful desires and focusing on Christ. That's what life is about. Knowing that our life is secure in Christ, that our hope is in Christ, And therefore, we ought to focus our life on Christ. Now, one thing that's quite interesting that I want to highlight about this letter is that one way we focus our mind on Christ is through singing. Paul writes in Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Paul teaches here that singing is an important part of worship in the church. When we sing, we sing both as a way to give thanks to God and as a way to teach and admonish one another. Therefore, the songs that we choose in our churches are very important. The songs we sing should contain the truth of the Bible set to music so we are truly obeying the command to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly through singing. 
Now, the book of Philemon was written to a man named Philemon, but it's also uh, written to be read along with the church at Colossae is to know what's going on in this situation, along with other leaders like Aphia and Archippus in the church that are mentioned in the letter. And um, it's a short letter. It's only one chapter. And therefore, when we talk about it, we just say the verses instead of chapter one, verse one. We simply say one through seven um, and just refer to the verses. Now, the main idea of the letter is that our relationship to Christ transforms every other relationship we have. Now, this is why this letter is included in the New Testament, because it has application beyond simply the situation that he's writing to uh, with Philemon. So uh, the basic structure of the letter, verses 1 to 7, Philemon is a dear friend and co-worker in the gospel. Verses 8 to 20, in Christ, the slave becomes a brother. And verses 21 to 25, Paul is confident that Philemon will obey his wish for the slave's freedom. So Philemon is a personal letter from Paul to a dear friend in Colossae. But the truth of the letter, like I said, applies to every Christian. Philemon's slave named Onesimus ran away from Philemon. But when Onesimus came to Rome, he ran into Paul. Paul shared the gospel with him. And Onesimus, this slave, this runaway slave, became a follower of Jesus. So Paul is explaining this situation to Philemon. He writes in Philemon uh, 15 to 16, for perhaps this is why he was, and that's Onesimus, Onesimus was separated from you, that's Philemon, uh, for a brief time so that you might get him back permanently, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave as a dearly loved brother. Since Onesimus and Philemon were now brothers in Christ, Paul insists in this letter that Philemon free Onesimus from his slavery and asks him to consider sending Onesimus back to Paul to assist him. So we too must treat fellow believers as brothers in Christ, and this will transform our relationships within our family, workplace, and community. You know, sometimes people will uh, criticize the Bible because um, it gives commands to slave owners. Um, it gives commands to slaves to submit to their slave owners. It doesn't come out and have a, 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 a forward um, just on the surface, abolitionist, uh, ending slavery point of view. And in fact, throughout history, some people have used those commands to justify the enslavement of people. But I think Philemon, the letter of Philemon is so important in um, understanding the full understanding of what the Bible teaches about slavery. Slavery is not a normal part of God's design. God created, as the Declaration of Independence says, all men are created equal. And um, Paul is recognizing that. And especially when we are united as brothers and sisters in Christ, then that means we're going back to that equality relationship, that relationship that was designed by God before sin with our, br our brothers and sisters, our fellow human beings. And so that's why Paul, in a very polite yet insistent way, is saying to Philemon, you need to free Onesimus. You need to let him go free as a slave and treat him as a brother instead of a slave. And I think the trajectory of that teaching is what has led uh, Christians throughout the centuries, but especially in the 1800s, to stand for abolition and say, enough is enough. That the slave, as the, as the Christmas carol says, the slave is our brother. We ought to free them and treat um, all men as equals because before God, that's exactly what we are.